I'm Robert LaPoyer, Senior Biotechnology Analyst at Noble Capital. And our next presenting company is Maya Biotechnology. This is a company that is developing targeted therapies in immuno-oncology products focused on first-in-class drugs with novel mechanisms of actions. One of the things about Maya is that Thio, its lead product, has two unique mechanisms of action. And here to tell us about it is CEO and Chairman, Dr. Vlad Vitak. Please go ahead, Dr. Vitak. Thank you, Robert. It's a pleasure to be here. So um, at Maya, we are developing a new science for cancer therapy that builds on a double mechanism of action, telomere targeting and immunogenicity, which means the enhancing the ability of uh, the human body to, to use its immune system against cancer. The lead molecule is thio. Thio is in the clinic, and we are working on the second generation of compounds currently in research and development. The phase two trial, Thio 101, uh, is nearing completion. It has, in fact, completed enrollment. And in this one, Thio is sequenced with um, Liptio, semiprimab, a checkpoint inhibitor, abbreviated as CPI, for the treatment of advanced non-small cell lung cancer. From this trial, we have published uh, a few months ago unprecedented disease control and then response with a long-term post-therapy patient benefit. In this trial, we are working with Regeneron, who are under a clinical supply agreement, are providing their checkpoint inhibitor, Liptio, also known as semiprimab. We have um, um, clinical my milestones that are within reach from today. The first one is Thio 101 top-line data is coming very soon. We, um, uh, we are, uh, our, app, our poster is approved to present at ASCO in Chicago on June 3rd. And long-term data is coming in the second half of 2024 in general, in the September timeframe around the ESMO convention. ESMO stands for the European Society of Medical Oncology, is the second largest in the world after ASCO, the American Society of Clinical Oncology. There are multiple potential pathways to FDA commercial approval from today, and we are intent to engage in the best one very soon. There is a significant marketing opportunity here, in, and this is in hard to treat cancers with very significant un unmet clinical need. Non-small cell lung cancer is the largest tumor type globally, both by mortality and by dollar sales. Then we have also received a huge endorsement from the FDA via three orphan drug designations awarded to Thio for its capabilities of treating liver cancer, specifically HCC or hepatocellular carcinoma, which is a dominant histology in liver cancers, 90%, and lung cancer, small cell lung cancer, the deadliest form of lung cancer, and also brain cancer, malignant gliomas. We are planning additional trials to tackle these indications in two further trials. Thio 102 will go for colorectal, HCC, small cell lung cancer, and solid tumors or comers. And then Thio 103 for first line of therapy, starting with lung cancer, both small cell and non-small cell. And here's a look uh, at our robust pipeline. Up top, you have Thio the world's first telomere targeting agent with the three trials. Thio 101, uh, the trial uh, that completed patient enrollment in February this year. This is in non-small cell lung cancer in second line of therapy plus. We're testing Thio in sequential combination with Liptio. Thio 102 is in planning. Thio 103 also in planning. Both of them are likely to start uh, uh, in the course of next year. And then we have the second generation of telomere targeting agents. So this is a program that we started about 18 months ago. And we generated 84 new molecules. All of them work in the same mechanism of action as style. 
telomere targeting with immunogenic effect. Seven of them have proven to be an order of magnitude superior to the original in certain tumor models in preclinical settings. We are moving them forward. The two in the lead have started already uh, preclinical testing towards IND enabling. IND stands for Investigational New Drug Designation. It is the green light from the FDA to uh, start the drug in the clinic, in patients. So these are less than a year to the clinic. And a third one is ready to start, and we have four others in reserve. We are building a franchise. So our mission is to treat cancer, and our vision is to someday cure it. Now, cancer is the most dominant age-related disease. It affects the elderly, and the population aged over 80 is expected to triple in the near future. In fact, in some countries, it's already over 80. It's in the 84 and 85 range in Japan, in Hong Kong, U.S. is pushing close to that as well. By age 90, the probability to be diagnosed with a type of cancer is around 40%, and to die of it, 20%. When you move to age 100, these numbers more than double. So unfortunately, cancer is a problem that continues to evolve, and it needs a solution. Tile can be it, is the only direct telomere targeting anti-cancer agent in clinical development. So here is the mechanism of action of TIO. It's a dual mechanism of action. First, telomere targeting. Second, immunogenic effect. So here to the left, you have in blue the chromosome that contains our DNA, our genetic information. At the end of the chromosome arms, are the telomeres in orange, our target. The telomeres are also DNA structures, like the chromosome, but shorter and with a very specific function to protect the integrity of the chromosome in the course of the cell division cycle. The telomeres are built and maintained by the enzyme telomerase. Telomerase is present in all normal cells in the first year of life. But at about age one, telomerase goes away. And at that point, the telomeres have reached their maximum length. From then on, with each cell division cycle, they lose a little until in the old age, they become critically short. They can no longer protect the chromosome and mutations begin to appear. And with this, the diseases of the old age including cancer. However, in cancer cells, something extraordinary happens. The enzyme telomerase is turned back on. And so the cancer cells regain their ability to elongate their telomeres and now reach a state of replicative immortality, a scientific way of saying they continue to divide and the tumor grows in the aging body. And this is where thio comes in. Thio is picked up by telomerase, is integrated in the structure of the telomere. It creates a faulty, unstable structure. The DNA unwinds, the cancer cell dies. This process is fast and efficient. It happens in 24 to 72 hours, and Thio directly kills 70 to 90% of the cancer cells. Then comes into play its immunogenic effect. Of the telomeric fragments, Thio forms micronuclei, small incomplete nuclei, that carry these fragments of telomeres to the immune system cells triggering an immune response that is so effective that if you follow thio with a checkpoint inhibitor, you get complete response, no recurrence, and anti-tumor immune memory. 
And we have seen this with Tayo in sequential combination with Liptayo, semiplimab of Regeneron, with Keytruda, pembrolizumab of Merck, with Tecentric of Genentech and Roche. And the first go to market is in partnership with Regeneron for non small cell lung cancer. So, our Tayo 101 trial in non small cell lung cancer is um, uh, in agreement with Regeneron. We have a clinical supply agreement under which Regeneron provide their drug Liptayo semiplimab for our trial, Tayo 101, free of charge. The trial design. So this, it, this trial is, um, has as primary objective to determine the most uh, efficacious dose of Tayo when administered in sequence with Liptayo in non-small cell lung cancer patients who are resistant to checkpoint inhibitors. Underline bolded. This is the most relevant greatest subset of non-small cell lung cancer patients that does not have a therapeutic solution, does not have any drug approved, and there is nothing in development. So non-small cell lung cancer patients, um, when they present, unfortunately, they pre more than half of them present with advanced disease because non-small cell lung cancer evolves silently without any signs and any symptoms. When patients are diagnosed, the disease is too far gone, has spread to other organs, and is inoperable and incurable with current means of therapy. So then the objective becomes to extend life. They receive a systemic therapy. About 30% of the patients have some type of a mutation, uh, an actionable mutation, for which they can receive a targeted therapy but 70% of patients do not. So they receive either immune therapy or a combination of immune therapy plus chemotherapy. They all progress. After six to seven months, they progress and they move to second line of therapy. And in second line, they receive a type of chemotherapy. Uh, also does not work well at all. After three to four months, they progress again to third line. And if, uh, very soon after that, they die. So, or they come to our trial. Now in our trial, we tested three doses of tile, 60 milligrams per cycle, 180 and 360 milligrams. The 60 milligrams per cycle is the curative dose in mouse models translated to humans. The maximum tolerated dose in humans is 2,500 milligrams per cycle. 60 versus 2,500, one 40th. This is unprecedented in oncology as a margin of safety. We are testing the higher doses. We were testing the higher doses just to make sure we don't leave on the table any possible additional efficacy. But even the highest dose, 360, is still seven times under the maximum tolerated dose. So the three doses prove to be equivalent in disease control rates. But what made the difference was overall response rates, which were clearly favoring the middle dose, 180 milligrams per cycle. As is the case with many other immune oncology drugs, there is no linear relationship between dose and effect. You just have to find the best dose by testing. And this happened to Keytruda, and it happened to Liptayo, and now again in this trial is the case. The 180 milligrams dose became evident to be the best uh, by November last year. And this is when the Oncology Independent Medical Committee running the trial met and selected the 180 milligrams dose as the best dose to move forward. And we did that and completed enrollment in February 24 in the 180 milligram dose cohort. We are now here and we are preparing the briefing book to go to the FDA 
to discuss the most effective path to commercial registration. We will be proposing a couple of alternatives, both of them leading to commercial approval by 2026. So disease control rates. Disease control rates um, are a very important first metric of response. They are the sum of stable disease plus partial response. Partial response is when is uh, noted when the tumor decreases by at least 30%. Anything between minus 30 and plus 20% is called stable disease. And disease control rates are a very important metric of efficacy because they can be measured in the first scan. And they are a superior so predictor for overall survival compared to partial response rates. Now, our observed disease control rates in this trial have been consistently far better than the standard of care disease control rates. So here in this table, you have on the vertical, first column, the treatment lines, first line, no small cell lung cancer, then second line and third line. The second column shows the standard of care performance on disease control rates. And mind you, all of these data was created when with patients that were checkpoint inhibitor naive. And the third column shows our data and these patients, our patients, were all checkpoint inhibitor resistant. They've already been treated with another checkpoint inhibitor and progressed. This is far more difficult to treat as a patient population. So in second line, we've seen 90% versus 64 to 53% with available options. In third line, we have seen 83% versus 25 to 35% with chemotherapy as real world data was published. And in fact, look at our numbers, 90 and 83%. They are e greater than what Ruda showed in first line in their pivotal trial, Keynote, Keynote 024. These numbers are an amazing start. Now we're tracking now survival. And here you have uh, swimmer's plots by line of therapy. To the left, the second line patients, uh, 28 patients in that group. To the, th to the right, third line plus patients, 24 patients in this group. So in this, we are, uh, the way we track the patients is in green is shown the period of time on treatment. And in gray is the period of time in follow-up. Our be the benchmarks which we're looking to beat are results obtained with the current standard of care. In second line, that's progression-free survival of 4.5 months and overall survival of 10.5 months. And uh, you, as you can see in second line, the vast majority of our patients are continuing therapy. We will publish uh, an update on this data um, at uh, ASCO in June. And then to the right, uh, you see the progression-free survival with current options are, is just under two and a half months. The vast majority of our patients cross that successfully. And the uh, overall survival is 5.8 months. And most of the patients have crossed that. And right now they're crossing it as we speak. Some of the patients have survived for a very long time. 14.6 months here in the first patient ever enrolled in the trial. This is an Australian woman enrolled in uh, July of 2022 and 12.5 months for the second patient. And now many patients are crossing the 12 month mark as we speak. So here is a closer look to third line proper. In third line proper, at, this po at the point of this data cut, which was January 8th, that's uh, now three, four months ago, we had already 10 out of 19 patients in this group, 53% that crossed the overall survival threshold of 5.8 months. And the majority of the patients, 84%, had crossed the 2.5 months progression-free survival threshold. The efficacy so far is unprecedented. Disease control rates in this group 
are 83% versus 25 to 35% with chemotherapy. And the response rates for the 180 milligram dose, the best dose, are 38% versus 6 to 10% with chemotherapy. Very impressive start. So where are we going with this? We're going to be targeting non-small cell lung cancer in third line of therapy. This is the highest unmet medical need, and it is also the patient population in which we show the most dramatic improvement in efficacy. Disease control rates are in the bag, 83% versus 25 to 35, only three times. That's unprecedented in third line. Response rates, 38% versus 6 to 10%, which is achieved with uh, chemotherapy options. Also many times greater. So to get full approval in third line of therapy, a drug needs to show a good hazard rate, which means hazard ratio, which means a statistically significant difference versus standard of care. 0.74 is uh, generally a very good target and the drug is approvable. So to get to that, we need to move the overall survival from 5.8 months to 7.8 months in a, a 300 patient trial. And we are tracking to double digit survival as we speak. This is a very high probability of technical success trial, much, much higher than what you see with other oncology trials. This is approaching 100%. It's a question of execution on it. So other planned upcoming trials. TIO 102 is another key trial we are going to tackle here. Other big cancers, colorectal, liver cancer, hepatocellular carcinoma, small cell lung cancer, both of these two building on, the, on two of the orphan drug designations, and then solid tumors, all comers, which is a um, signal generation arm. We will be looking at breast, prostate, gastric, pancreatic, ovarian, and others. And as soon as we see uh, the efficacy forming in a certain tumor type, we then go for, uh, we make it into its own arm. And we'll be testing thio in sequential combination with different checkpoint inhibitors. We are in advanced discussions with, uh, with companies and to uh, put this into practice. And we expect this to start in the next 12 months. Now in colorectal, in preclinical setting, we have seen some of our best responses to date. Here you have, this is a, a preclinical test. They have in uh, MC38 colorectal, which is immunologically cold, does not respond to immune therapy. And we tested TIO in, in sequential combination with atezolizumab or, or Tecentric, made by Roche and Genentech. And this is what we see. We see in the control arm in gray, the tumor grows fast, it's aggressive. In orange is atezolizumab, tecentric monotherapy grow, grows almost as fast, confirming this is an immunologically cold type of tumor. Um, and then in green, thio is monotherapy, blocking the tumor growth, but the sequential combination in blue with a 100% complete response. We then tracked the complete responses for 70 days and there was no recurrence. Now in mouse, 70 days are like seven years in humans. The curative threshold is five. At this point, they are cured, but we go above and beyond and re-challenge with 10 times more colorectal cancer cells and with no additional treatment, there is no cancer take. Immune memory is in place because of TIO. TIO has trained the immune system to find and kill the cancer cells on its own without any further therapy. The only therapy administered in this experiment was here in the beginning, two cycles. Small cell lung cancer, we have seen very good results here too. This was Tayo with Pembro, Kitruda, made by Merck. In HCC, hepatocellular carcinoma, liver cancer, 
again, very good results. This was Tayo in combination with atezolizumab, the Sentry. So these were the two data sets that the FDA reviewed when they granted the two orphan drug designations for Tayo, the first two. And then last year, we have seen for the first time, Tayo as monotherapy achieving 100% complete response in liver cancer in HCC, published at AACR, the American Association of Cancer Research meeting. And when we added a checkpoint inhibitor to this, specifically Liptayo, look at the blue line. This complete response was sustained for a very, very long time, 19 days. This is like nine years in humans. Then we re-challenged with two times more HCC cells with no additional treatment, and there was no cancer take. Immune memory is in place here because of Tayo. And we then followed up a very, very long time, 210 days. This is like 21 years in humans. Very definitive. Tayo 103 is our second planned trial. And this trial will be going for first line of therapy where most of the patients are. So here we're gonna in, go for small cell lung cancer first, where we will be testing in combination with the standard of care, which is uh, etoposide platinum chemotherapy plus decentric. And then in non small cell lung cancer in first line, when we will be testing with lip dial. This is a market expansion to first line trial. So the investment opportunity. This is based on the new chemical entity NCE marketing exclusivity. Tayo is going for this. It's the most robust exclusivity you can get. In the United States, it gives seven years, five years plus two from Hatch-Waxman. And the clock starts with the day one of commercial approval. In Europe, Japan, and other markets, it's 10 years. And this is supported by a very robust and growing patent portfolio for Tayo. We have doubled the number of patents in the last year alone, with five issued and 29 pending. The most recent covers Tayo as an immunogenic treatment strategy, and that's in sequential combination with checkpoint inhibitors, and it goes to 2041. Now, our management team is very experienced. I'm a physician by my first training and a businessman by my second training and have spent my entire career in oncology, in pharma and biotech, about 50-50 between commercial and medical. Along the way, I had the opportunity and privilege to launch many compounds ag against different tumor types, some of them through paradigm shifts in their day, such as Nexavar at Bayer. Nexavar was the first tyrosine kinase inhibitor targeted therapy to treat kidney cancer and liver cancer, HCC, where we are also going with thiom. Nexavar peaked at over a billion dollars a year. Then Tarsiva at Astellas, for non-small cell lung cancer, where we also are going with Tayo, over $3 billion a year. And then Extandi for prostate cancer, now more than $5 billion a year. All very good, but none of them showed this type of efficacy that we are now seeing with Tayo and Liptayo. And such a safety profile, which is very, very mild, and applicability in so many tumor types, Tayo works in any tumor that is telomerase positive. 85% of cancer cells in aggregate are telomerase positive. Huge applicability, nothing like it before. Now our market opportunities here are very significant. We are going after top tumor type markets globally. Non-small cell is number one by mortality and by sales. Colorectal is second. 
The checkpoint inhibitors as a group sold $42 billion in, these are numbers from 2022. These projections are over 50 for last year. Five of them are approved for non-small cell lung cancer, which is the main source of business for the checkpoint inhibitors. Hitruda is the market leader, uh, in, uh, it, which uh, it takes half of the sales. Liptio is an excellent drug as well, with a profile very similar to Keytruda, but it has an issue. It is a late entry, market entry number five. So it needs to show superior efficacy to Keytruda. And the sequential combination with Thio is key. On its own, Liptio is tracking to peak sales as per financial analyst consensus to about $2.5 to $3 billion a year. With Thio, it can easily become a $20 billion drug. Now, about comparable companies, people are always asking, what are some good comparators? Where are we going with this? Or here, you can uh, we have to the left the Maya market cap as it currently stands. It is a very low market cap relative to the value proposition. Excellent buy. Um, to the right, you have five different oncology companies that tackle non-small cell lung cancer. And these are their valuations after they presented their long-term phase two pivotal data, or some of them are even commercial. And they range from one to $4 billion. You see the pricing per share here as well. Uh, this is where we will be next year. So we have multiple value driving milestones here. Um, we have, uh, first of all, at ASCO, look for the efficacy presentation, June 3rd in the afternoon. Then later on at ESMO, the European Society of Medical Oncology in September, look for a long-term efficacy uh, presentation as well. Somewhere in the course of the year, probably in Q2 to Q3, we are projecting we will have a major pharma deal in the shape of a co-development to commercialization agreement. This will be ideally announced between the two presentations, but in the course of this year, major, major catalyst. And then in 2025, we plan to have the final data from the pivotal part of the trial and file for US approval with potential accelerated approval in the United States in 2026. In parallel, we move forward to Thio 102 and Thio 103 for additional indications in additional tumor types. And then again, the next generation of compounds, telomere targeting agents with immunogenic properties. We are building a franchise. And with this, we are arriving to the end of our presentation and I'm ready to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Virak. That was very informative, and that was a great explanation of the two mechanisms of action, both the direct killing and the immune stimulation that Thio brings to these patients. One of the questions that I have relates to the partnership that you, that you mentioned, and you had mentioned the partnership with Regeneron for the first trial, but what about the other trials? And when you mention a commercial partnership, what do you expect this to include? So we are in, in advanced discussions with several uh, pharmaceutical biotech companies that are currently in the data room. And uh, so, uh, so most of them are makers of checkpoint inhibitors and others are not. Um, the ideal scenario for my biotech is where we engage in a co-development agreement under which they come in with a significant upfront just to catch them up, to, st to stand on equal footing with our investment so far in the program, which over the years has, is now totaling more than $40 million. So we're expecting something comparable to come in as an upfront. 
And then from that, from here on, uh, a 50-50 development participation. And uh, for commercialization, we can uh, we can hold on to US and um, have X US um, licensed out, and we can do a profit sharing uh, participation. That would be a great scenario, a win-win for all parties. Of course, there are many variations to these types of deals, um, uh, but think of uh, other successful compounds that arrive to something similar, like Medi Extendi by Medivation, or uh, or the pharmacyclics deal. Yes, uh, there are many components and many variations. So yeah, there are there are a lot of different forms a deal can take, basic or more extensive. So yeah, we'll be looking for that. And one of the other things uh, you mentioned several milestones in in the next several months. Uh, I I thought you touched on some of the data updates that might be coming out. Could you, is it appropriate to be more specific on those or? Yes, a little bit more specific we can be. It's uh, It will be midterm efficacy presented at the ASCO and then long-term efficacy at ASMO. This is what we're going to be showing. Uh, and this should be a major catalyst. Okay, great. So. It looks like there are some big inflection points coming up. Yes. Okay. All right. And uh, on on the slide, you you mentioned first approval. And is there a projected time frame that Thio might be commercially available in its first indication? Yes. Uh, we will soon engage with the FDA to align on the optimal trajectory to obtain commercial approval. And there are several paths under consideration to get to that. Um, and we anticipate a final decision on Thio from the FDA in 2026. Okay, great. And what, one of the other things was that you were, you were your clinical trial is using third-line treatment. These are patients who have failed therapies, they're very sick, very short life expectancy. If approved in that indication, could patients be treated earlier or do you have additional trials running or expected or what would be the status for earlier treatment? Yes, we want to start the first line trial, uh, not uh, farther, much farther along that will treat the first line patients. If a drug is approved in third line, typically it is used in third line or beyond third line, in fourth line, fifth line of therapy, but rarely used before third line. So if, but if we get approval in first line, then it can be used also in second line. Okay, great. All right, uh, I think we have time. Well, we have a bunch of questions from the floor. Let me just start with one. Uh, someone is asking, when do you expect to initiate part C of the trial? Do you expect it to be 300 patients? And how difficult do you think that will be to enroll? Part C of the TIO 101 trial for accelerated approval is expected to be about 100 patients. And first patient in is currently projected in Q4 this year. And full um, enrollment to it will be in 2025. Okay, great. Okay, uh, I think that is all the time that we have, but uh, there are other questions that people can ask me directly or contact Vlad directly at the company and we will get them answered. Uh, so Dr. Vida, thank you very much. This has been a great presentation, some very interesting data presented and some great milestones coming up. We'll be looking forward to them. Thank you as well. Thank you for the time here. And thank you, everybody, for your attention. And we're always open for, to further discussions. And, and we hope to see you joining us as investors in this. And it's a, this is a, a therapy approach that will change many lives along the way and will generate a lot of value for the investors. We hope to work together. And we'll see you soon. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.